We had a commemoration for John Lee this morning. It's just about 51 years since the time he passed away. When you read his autobiography, you get a very strong sense of how much determination he put into his practice. Polyterm Atitana is one of the baramis, is one of the perfections we try to develop. In other words, it's the element of willpower you put into the practice. You really have to make up your mind that this is what you want to do, this is where you want to go. <coughs> and of course, once you make up your mind like that, there are going to be obstacles both inside and out. But that shouldn't be reason to shrink away from your determination. What it means is you have to learn how to use your discernment. In fact, in one of the canonical descriptions of atitana or determination, discernment comes first. You use your discernment both in your choice of the goal that you want to attain and in the means by which you're going to go about it, how you can get there. Which means that when things are easy, you keep your you keep right on the path. When things are difficult, you try to keep right on the path. But it takes more discernment to figure out how to get around the obstacles. An important element of discernment is not just figuring things out, but looking at your determination. Remember part of the discernment part of the path is not only right view, but also right resolve. Resolve on renouncing sensuality, resolve on renouncing ill will and harmfulness. That second element there is a very important one. There's a passage in the Karane Metta Sutta we chanted just now, being resolved on this mindfulness of goodwill for all. When you're working on this path, it can't be simply out of disgust with the world or anger at people who have been difficult. It has to come out of goodwill. You try to nurture that quality in your mind as, at the same time, you're making the determination you really do want to find a way out. And that helps protect us the unskillful things that may be hiding in our, in our determination. It's often said the mind is like a committee, and sometimes the good members are working on something and some unskillful members sneak in, and all of a sudden you find that the task you would assign to the good members suddenly gets taken over by somebody else. This is why the Buddha says you have to be determined on mindfulness, keeping in mind the quality of goodwill for all beings as your underlying motivation. Now, having goodwill for others doesn't mean that you always do what they want. It's important to realize there's a distinction between harming others and hurting their feelings. If hurting their feelings were harming them, then people would have ways of blackmailing you. You have to look at, are you harming them in ways that really would cause damage to their spiritual well-being? That's something else. At a common level, you don't break the precepts around these other people. At a deeper level, you have to have a sense of what's really good for them and what's really good for you. Remember, we're looking here for happiness that's not just happiness for us, but well-being, a sense of inner happiness that is in line with other people's inner happiness, too. Remember the image of the acrobats. One acrobat stands on the shoulders of the other one. Each one has to look after his or her balance. If you're worried about the other acrobat, you're going to lose your balance and fall down and pull both of you down. 
So as the Buddha said, there are times when if you look after yourself skillfully, that's looking after others skillfully as well. And if you look after others skillfully, you're going to be looking after yourself skillfully. But that possibility is always there. And your determination helps you find it. You make up your mind, I want to find a happiness that's not going to harm anybody else. And you put your mind to it, you put your heart to it. It's when you're focused on something like that that opportunities appear. All too often we use that quality for unskillful things. Trying to figure out how you can get money out of a situation, or say with an alcoholic how they can get some alcohol out of a situation. And the force of their determination actually opens up opportunities that might not have been there before. But of course those opportunities are not going to be helpful at all. What we have to learn how to do is bring that same focus to a happiness that's good for us and good for others. So when we talk about basing our determination on discernment, we have to include that quality of goodwill as well. And open our minds to the possibility that there may be opportunities in our lives that we hadn't thought of before, or hadn't noticed before. For giving, us, giving ourselves space to practice that at the same time, we're being helped to others. Once you've made up your mind in that direction, you have to be true to that. That's the second quality in determination. Now, with some determinations, you begin to realize that you weren't all that wise in your decision or you weren't all that understanding in how you formulated your idea about where you wanted to go. At the very least, with the pursuit of the end of suffering, it is a wise goal. But you're going to find as you work on the path that your concept of where you're going and how you're going to go there will have to grow and develop. So this element of truthfulness means not only just sticking to your original ideas, it means sticking to your original goal, but trying to be sensitive to what needs to be changed. Again, that's where the discernment comes in. And when setbacks come, you have to learn how to deal with them and not lose heart. The third quality is relinquishment. In other words, the things you're going to have to give up. And you learn how to give them up with good grace. But there's some things you don't give up. The Buddha talks about when you're helping others, you don't want to break the precepts. In other words, your virtue is not something you give up. Even if it may help other people, the Buddha said that's not in the long run going to be helping anybody. And finally, there's peace. This is not just the peace of having attained the goal that you want, but learning to keep your mind calm and unruffled as you pursue your goal. Because otherwise, how are you going to see those opportunities? that allow you to make your way to the goal through all the difficulties, through all the obstacles. Whatever comes up, you have to remind yourself there's a way out of this. Even if death comes, there's a way that you don't have to suffer. To say nothing of the lesser obstacles in life. So the Buddha never promised that this is going to be an easy path. but. He did say, if you set your mind on it, it's possible. And he gave all kinds of encouragement. There's one passage where one of his cousins, I think it is, one of his relatives, is getting discouraged in the path. And the Buddha says, look, everything you need is here. 
just at the moment you don't see it. Just take heart. This is not an impossible path. If it were, the Buddha wouldn't have, wouldn't have taught it, he said. If it weren't possible to develop skillful qualities, he wouldn't have taught it. If it weren't possible to, to, to abandon unskillful qualities, he wouldn't have taught to abandon them. Everything he teaches is a possibility. Now the speed with which we're going to practice, that depends on our own actions, our own choices. But if you make up your mind that this is what you really want, and base that decision on goodwill for all. You're sure to find your way through. <laughs>